Yes. Always nice to have you on here. How you been? I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Why? Something going on? No. <laughs> How are you celebrating the Mullerversary? Happy Mullerversary, by it's the It's been one full year, which is, by my calculations, 36 and a half Scaramucci's. <laughs> That's true. So That's true. That's put true. that on your pipe and smoke it. So, one year in, one year in, uh, um, Donald Trump is still calling this witch hunt. Okay? Yeah. They've caught a few witches, by they, the way. They have. They there have. have been a few witch indictments. Yes. And I would buy witch, witch insurance if yes, I were Donald so, Trump. Some, some witch bond bailsmen are in, in business. Ju Giuliani, um, great lawyer. He's Clearly. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic lawyer. <laughs> he has said that the, the, the whole investigation at this point has become absurd. It's absurd. Is it absurd? No. Nope. Is there anything absurd about it? Uh, the fact that the president keeps talking about it. That, you think he should just shut up? I think anybody who... I, I think people who like him think he should shut up. I think people who don't like him think he should shut up about the... <laughs> I mean, I, I, about, about the indictment. <laughs> the, the investigation. I, There's no... I, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I mean, there, Exercise your freedom of speech, <laughs> sir. <laughs> There are times, I just know, I mean, you know this crazy news cycle, there are times that we will be, you know, getting ready to do a show, and then the president will blast forth with a bunch of uh, Twitter spray. Yep. And uh, there, goes, there goes our block on the, you know, the booming economy. We got to cover, <laughs> we got to cover President Trump uh, going after the FBI or the Justice Department. Right. I, don't, I don't think he's it does an him any good. Worst, he's the own worst enemy yeah. for that. Yeah. And I know you're just trying to help him. It comes... You're it, just trying to help, It comes Jake. from a place of, place of love, for, for country oh. and for the presidency, yes. For the presidency. And the president. Uh. <laughs> so Giuliani says, he's, the thing he's shopping around today, in yeah. Giuliani's yeah. assignment this week yes. of, like, wrap it up. Come on, a year. Time to wrap it up. He says, um, all that Mueller can do is write a report. <laughs> yeah. First of all, he's claiming Mueller's team said to him, we can't indict. We don't know if they said that. Um, but do, do, do you, is that true? Do you know? Have you talked to people? Can, can all Mueller do is write a report? Well, it's a report that goes to the deputy attorney general, and it might have criminal charges recommended in it. But sure, I mean, <laughs> if that's what you mean by report, yeah. I mean, it might end up with people being charged and going before a grand jury. All I want is a report. <laughs> what kind of report are you looking for? Like, are you looking for... The truth. <laughs> yeah. I just want the truth. I want somebody to say... What actually happened? Yeah, and because that's, that's... I think the greatest damage. I mean, Donald Trump will come and Donald Trump will go, but um, I think we learned that from Stormy. But <laughs> um, what I I keep telling you, you don't have to work blue. You don't have to work blue, kid. It's on a blue card. What am I going to do? <laughs> um, but but what I'm what worries me as you're saying presidency I'm worried that we will no longer value knowing what the truth is yeah. anymore and I think that's the value of the Mueller investigation Donald Trump goes to jail no jail whatever even impeachment I don't know it's knowing what the truth was so that we can have some sort of ethical or moral spine to this moment yeah and you know what I'll, and I'll I'll do you one better will I, you. I, we'll see. I, yeah. We'll see if it's better. That's what you think. You want the truth about Russia and possible collusion. I just would like the truth and facts to be respected again in this country. The idea that... <laughs> there was... I think, I think you did me one I think, better. I think I, I, think I, I did one better. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're in a period now where the president can just go on Twitter and say, I'm bringing these three hostages back. And, and by the way, kudos to him. Good, uh, good on that. That's awesome that he did that. Three hostages back. Uh, you know, the Obama administration tried to get them. They failed. But, you know, I, I did it. Two of them were taken hostage when President Trump was president. How on earth was President Obama <laughs> supposed to right. get them out? They had Obama brought home ten hostages. Yeah, but he just didn't do a 3 a.m. photo op with him. True. But, uh, but in any case, my... my... That doesn't... No, that's, that's, that's not that's cheap. Not. I'll get you. Yeah, I'll yeah, get I, you. Still, I still want up to you. Yeah. That's good. Um, now, you gave, you gave a, a speech at... Uh, you gave the commencement address at Amherst. UMass Amherst. UMass yeah. Amherst, sorry. Yeah. UMass Amherst. Uh, and you, you, you warned that the very notion of empirical fact is being attacked and corroded... Well, let me ask you about how that feels then to have people on TV 
who aid and abet with the corrosion of that information. I've spoken to, to you about this before, just recently, in regards to your book. Um, Kellyanne Conway. Yeah. Why have her on TV? <laughs> she is a collection of deceptions with a blonde wig stapled on top. What? So... She would, she would take issue with that description. Um, I will say she this. She would be lying again. <laughs> I will say this. We always debate whether or not to have on any guest. Would this guest be helpful for our viewers to understand such and such? Now, the last time we had Kellyanne Conway on, it was right after it became clear <laughs> from Rudy Giuliani that President Trump had not told the truth about what he knew about the hush money payment to, to Stormy Daniels via Michael Cohen. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was worth the time mm -hmm. to have Kellyanne Conway come on and for me to challenge her on the notion of why does this president tell so many lies? Yeah. A premise with which she didn't really take issue. She said the president does many things. Um, <laughs> which was... Which you'll have to concede is true. That is. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that the, sometimes it's worth it to have people on so you can challenge the very notion of the facts that are being... Uh, disregarded and the lies that are being told. Who over there is telling the truth? Who do you go, God, if I could have that person, they tend to give me the straight dope. There are plenty of people that I've had on the show that I don't think are lying to me. We had John Bolton, the national security advisor, on the show. He's and not I lying. He's just crazy. <laughs> honestly, though. Honestly. His mustache lies, though. His mustache is very honest. Mustache is honest? It's, an, uh, it's a true mustache. General Snowflake? I saw a bunch of fake mustaches in your makeup room. Oh, good. So I know. So that we're the liars. So now. you're the liars. <laughs> That's I know. all the show business is. That's, lying. I'm just saying I know what a true mustache and a fake mustache is. All right, let's get to, let's get to some more lying from the lying Jake Tapper. By the you way, have I have to say, book. his Trump has gotten so good. Like your Trump accent, I said this to you the other day. It's, I've been watching it evolve since 2015. Yeah. It's strong. I think it's strong. Another lie. <laughs> terrible, Colbert, terrible accent. Absolutely nothing like me. Thank you, though. It's Thank you very much. Good. Now, you, you've, 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 uh, you've, uh, uh, Now, this is lies. This, this is fiction. Is, this is fiction. This is my new you have novel. entered the world of, uh, of novels. Jake Tapper, your new novel is called The Hellfire Club. Why? Why, sir, at long last, if you care about the truth, are you writing fiction? I thought it'd be fun. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff going on in Washington that I wanted to write about, but in a fictitious way. Because have... this isn't now, this is 1954. It takes place in 1954. A young congressman goes to Washington with his uh, cool zoologist wife, and they get swept up in a world of conspiracy and secret societies. The real Hellfire Club, you know this, the real Hellfire Club was a secret society in England in the 1700s full of, uh, of nobility and, and uh, politicians and businessmen would go to this estate about an hour outside London and engage in all sorts of debaucherous activities. Can you imagine the smell? <laughs> <laughs> Not good smells, I would think. No. Ben Franklin went. Ben Franklin went, and so the, the conceit of the book is what if Ben Franklin liked it so much he brought it to the United States and it continued and it was in... Secretively full, in secret, Washington. Secretively, and, and it was in full power in 1954. Yeah. And, and there's, there, there's murder... <laughs> So there's some murders. There's ma'am. There's a lot of Joe McCarthy in here. Joe McCarthy is there, and uh, you know they say history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And if you if you study the uh, McCarthy era and you see a politician telling a lot of lies and smearing people, and not a lot of people in Washington standing up to the indecency, you hear a little you hear a little rhyming, maybe. Um, by the way, speaking of sense of smell, your character in this, uh, the main character, Charlie Martyr, yeah, Charlie Martyr. Uh, he, he's described as having a keen sense of smell. Yeah. Now, I understand that you also have a keen sense of smell. My brother and I both have very keen senses of smell. Like, documented or just like, uh... I hope we haven't gone to the, to the Smith Center of olfactory gifts, if that's what you're referring to. Is that a real place? No. <laughs> Another lie. It's a fiction. Another lie. Another uh, lie. Yes. But we do have a really good sense of smell, and I have to tell you, uh, it's a curse. It's a curse. How so? Well, first of all, America, you need a mint. All of you. How do I smell right now? Did you have cat food for lunch? <laughs> what did you have for lunch? Did you have, honestly... Frisky did... buffet. No, honestly. Honestly, did you have tuna for lunch? I did. Yeah. But I've brushed my teeth in everything since then and put on deodorant. 
which would be perfect for normal people. But, but I But you have, have a superpower. I have a superpower. <laughs> and as I said, it is a curse. Wow, whiskers. <laughs> okay. It, be... it right. is relevant to the plot, though, I should point out. His sense of smell becomes relevant to the plot. Sure, yeah. sure. Is there a gas leak or something? I'm not, I'm not spoiling it of for course, anybody. Of course, of course. Now, and of course, you can't sell a book without a sex scene. I don't really have a sex scene. I have a, a, a sexy scene. Sexy. Sexy scene. Yeah. They, they've just, it's just happened. Charlie is married to his wife, and they have, there's a scene after they have had sex. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You seem pretty defensive about this. <laughs> It's just, it's just a fiction. He could be having sex with anybody. I just think it's he weird. Just... It's the one part of the book you have highlighted in town. <laughs> it's true. It's all that... Would you, may I, would you like to read the sex scene or shall I read the sex scene? I think you'd be better. You could do your Barry White voice. Can we, can we have, can we get some... For me, it'd be like a new Any chance to get mood lighting or anything like yeah, that? Let's... Could we get a little, a little sexy snare music? Or something? A little boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Mm. Chapter 22. <laughs> Charlie exhaled one last satisfied breath to both begin the process of bringing down his heart rate and signal his immense satisfaction. <laughs> indeed. Indeed, Margaret said. Their clothes strewn about the living room, the couple lay naked on the couch. In the weeks since they returned from Maryland, they had been reconnecting, first as friends, then? now as husband and wife. All right. Her expanding <laughs> abdomen. She's no pregnant. Impediment. She's pregnant. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Margaret is pregnant. That's filthy. Margaret is pregnant. Pregnant people don't have sex. How dare you? You make an expanding abdomen, and people are like, what does that mean? She's. She has You'll a baby. You'll have to read the book There's to find out. There's a baby in there. We don't know. There's a baby. You have to in... buy it now. <laughs> the Hellfire Club is available as we speak. Jake Tapper, everybody. <laughs>